I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor. And I'm Dan Barker. We're executive directors of the Freedom From Religion Foundation. Today we'll be talking about the intersection of science and rap music with performer Baba Brinkman. The Freedom From Religion Foundation, which produces Free Thought Matters, is the nation's largest association of free thinkers, that's atheists, agnostics, and other non-believers. We invite you to join us in our vital work to keep our secular government free from religious influence. Become a member at ffrf.org or ask for a complimentary copy of our newspaper, Free Thought Today. Freedom depends on free thinkers. Watch prior episodes of Free Thought Matters on FFRF's YouTube channel. There are many ways of doing science education, but did you know it can be done with rap music? Our guest today is doing just that. Baba Brinkman is a New York-based rap artist. He's best known for his Rap Guide series on evolution, human nature, medicine, religion, climate change, and consciousness. He's probably the only musician with a song that includes the name of the biologist Theodosius Dobshansky. <laughs> An award-winning playwright, Brinkman has toured the world. He's performed off-Broadway and at many events such as the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Baba Brinkman has performed live on MSNBC's The Rachel Maddow Show, and he shared the stage with Stephen Hawking and Neil deGrasse Tyson. He won the National Center for Science Education's Friend of Darwin Award for popularizing evolutionary biology. With a master's in English literature, he has also pioneered in Lit Hop, with rap adaptations of Beowulf, Gilgamesh, and Canterbury Tales. So, Baba Brinkman, nice to see you again. Nice to be back. You just gave me the, the nerdiest rapper <laughs> intro of all time, and I love it. Is that your National Science Award trophy there behind you? Uh, yeah, it literally is. They, uh, uh, they did up this beautiful glass figurine. And um, is that backwards for you guys? Oh, there we go. Oh, there yeah, go. so I, I keep that uh, prominently displayed since I feel like it's a, uh, a battle worth joining and one that I got a wonderful acknowledgement for. This came just after I was uh, finished with my off-Broadway production where we did 110 uh, pro-Darwin rap guide to evolution shows off-Broadway in New York in 2011. Wow, amazing. That's, that's pretty cool. Well, before we talk about how you got involved in science and rap music, we want to show a couple of minutes of your amazing video about free will. Our fundamental beliefs about what a human being is rely on what we think about free will. What makes my life meaningful is, in fact, the series of choices that I make was something I decided to do internally generated, or was it due to some external influence? The problem with the term free will is that it means so many different things to so many different people. If someone asks, do you have free will? The first thought is, okay, well, what's free will? Well. I don't know. I haven't thought about it. I just took it for granted. Listen to this lyric. It isn't freestyle. It's written. I wrote it of my own free will. It was my decision. Every intimate constituent part of it was deliberate. I considered how to script it and how to stand and deliver it. Forethought, but that doesn't mean nothing comes before thought. Take a look at the source of your thoughts. You might find the doors blocked. If every decision is made in a part of my brain that's invisible to me, that's will, but with a subliminal origin. I'm not thinking it's too free. But if not me, who was it that chose to bust the rhyme? And if the clock was reset, I bet I could not have done otherwise. If every molecule and brain state was in the same place, the same thing would happen. 
So what sense does blame make or praise make? I'm training to bring nothing but my game face. Even if the outcome of the race goes back to Big Bang days. In a deterministic universe that obeys the laws of physics, it takes a magic wand to make a truly uncaused decision. So there's no such thing as absolute responsibility. And the more we discover, the more we degrade culpability. Every brain tumor found in someone who shoots up a playground tells us that we're nothing but brain tumors all the way down. I can't stop believing I can choose I feel it in my molecules Words and bees I want some moves A muscle is only strong when it's used I feel it in my molecules Believe it, I can choose Freedom is only strong when it's used Wow, that's that is incredible. Of course, we all feel like we have free will, don't we? But did you have a choice to make that video? <laughs> no, that video unfolded exactly as the universe had determined since the Big Bang, and I was merely an assemblage of the atoms that <laughs> played out that physicalist process. Uh, but that doesn't mean I won't take credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, by, by taking credit, you're sort of assuming some kind of moral free will there, aren't you? Yes, or, or at least a sort of positional relative kind of free will. Huh. I think relative to other entities in the universe and other humans on this planet, I was able to assemble that video in a fairly unique way uh, that, you know, based on predispositions, uh, genetic proclivities, uh, experiences and instincts. And for those things, uh, I'm as good a locus of credit delivery as there exists. And I think that may be, uh, you know, the kind of basis of our f folk idea of free will. <laughs> so if is I... that we need things to praise and blame, and we want to influence the universe, and we can't really function socially without that, and we can call that free will. So if I make a donation to you, you'll cash the check? <laughs> Absolutely. And I will write a thank you note to you for your choice to donate. <laughs> so how can people find the rest of that free will video? So that, that lives on my YouTube channel, uh, which is at Baba Brinkman on YouTube. And there are two versions of it. I did the one with the, um, the graphics to show the lyrics, because I'm quite proud of the lyrics. I think they're a good uh, text on free will. But there's also a version without the lyrics, and it's on the YouTube channel of a documentary, uh, which is called Free Will, the Documentary. So the intro uh, interviews that you saw with scientists and philosophers were part of that documentary, and I highly recommend the whole doc. Uh, it's an hour and a half long, and it takes a deep dive into the science and metaphysics behind what we think of as free will. Yeah, we, we saw, saw Daniel Dennett. Daniel Dennett and Massimo Piliucci, and who else was involved in that? I think Sean Carroll was in there as well, and Coleman Hughes was one of the intro interviews, and also Heather Berlin was in there. Wow. Pretty, so you go into the real philosopher, the real scientist for this, huh? I mean, that's, that is my rap process. I call it peer-reviewed rap, and I pretty much don't do a hip-hop project or a video or a show unless I have consulted with uh, primary researchers, checked my lyrics by them. Because, you know, I don't want to be out there just expressing my opinion as an artist. I can editorialize, but my goal as an artist is to really get some version of the scientific consensus and the big questions and the facts across. And, uh, I, you know, I think rap is a powerful vehicle for that, and there's enough... There's enough artists sharing opinions out there, you know? Somebody needs to uh, take a science journalism approach to the, to the art form, so that's what I'm trying to do. So, how, briefly, how did you get involved in rap? I mean, I was just a passionate teenager that loved the genre, listened to hip-hop. I don't know if you guys have been following in the news, but last week was the 50th yeah, yeah. anniversary of hip-hop culture. Uh, which uh, has been celebrated globally, and I, I was just all in on it. And then, you know, started writing rhymes in my uh, hometown of Vancouver, Canada. But I was kind of a bookworm, and I was midway through an English lit degree, so I started writing rhymes about Chaucer and Shakespeare and William Blake, and then moved from there into science. And I've always just, uh, you know, channeled the big ideas that I find interesting, and and you know what's happening in the world that I find interesting into the art form. But uh, you know, I see it as a you know, it's the modern troubadour genre. Like if Chaucer or Shakespeare were born in the world today, I think they would choose the medium of rap because it's so potent, uh, so immediate, so good at engaging a crowd, so good with the wordplay. So uh, my intro to it was really as a poetry nerd. I love the poetry of rap. So rap is the lyrics and hip hop is the music, right? 
Uh, it's a little different than that. Hip hop is more like a culture that includes uh, the art of graffiti and the dance uh, of break dancing and the text of rap and the music of rap and also the musical form DJing. And so this whole sort of multi-genre culture started in New York in the 1970s and then rap just became its most familiar product. So rap is the musical form of the culture of hip hop. Now, sometimes you'll say hip hop music and sometimes you'll say rap music, sometimes they're interchangeable. Uh, but if you're a break dancer, you're hip hop, but it's not rap. So uh -huh. there's some like categorical uh, hierarchies there, but uh, it's all it's all part of the culture that I fell in love with when I was young. And you know, the expression of it that I do is the rap one. So we wanna have time to show another excerpt, but briefly, how did you get involved in science and why is it so important to educate about science? Well, I, I didn't really seek it out. I was doing a rap version of Chaucer's Canterbury Tales on tour in the UK in 2007 and 8. <clears throat> and a scientist saw that show and then he reached out to me. His name was Dr. Mark Pallon. Uh, he was at the University of Birmingham at, Birmingham at the time and he said, you can do Chaucer, can you do Darwin? How about the origin of species as a rap? And I just loved that idea. I signed up and he became my first scientific peer reviewer. He coined the peer reviewed rap uh, moniker. And, and so starting in 2009, I was just a Darwin advocate and science communicator based on that one project. And from there, climate change, neuroscience, uh, medicine, genetics, all the different topics that I've tackled have sort of stemmed from that original Darwin project. So let's look at another one of the clips. This is I Am Human, is that right? I'm human, loud and proud. Hello, I am a human being. I'm human, alive on this planet rock. Chip off the old block, primate mammal stock. Natural born chatterbox, looking back at our path in the top. It started in Africa, home of our bonobo and chimpanzee cousins. Where OG fossil hominids keep being discovered. Seven million years is a lean budget. From knuckle dragon to supreme niche construction. But we did it, by feudalism we leaned in. Naturally selected the genes in, increase the cerebrum, human accelerated regions. And yes, I confess, some interbreeding, bringing dead hominids back to life. I'm at least 3% Neanderthal, ask my wife. She knows, got the genomes to bring it home. Plus, then it's open from a tooth and a finger bone. And that's enough to see populations today with 8% Denisovan sequences in their bases. Homo sapiens, the last representatives. No more we practices or fluorescences. Poor little hobbits never made it out the shire so why did we thrive while the rest expired was it tools or babysitters or language or fire and the progeny testify how does a human originate i mean our form and our shape and also how we behave what's a human just an alternate with some new adaptations a few novel traits and solutions we can pass innovations from brain to brain we can stand up and say i'm human Wow. Uh, was that the Naledi Caves in Africa? Were you in Africa? Yes, that's exactly right. That was last year in South Africa, and that was the Rising Star cave uh, system where they found Naledi. Precisely right. Wow. So how, how uh, does the rap world accept your, your message? I mean, I, I hang out with a lot of rappers here in New York, and uh, they, they celebrate my unique innovation to the culture. Because uh, I've, I've all but cornered the market on science rap. That's not true, actually. Several of the rappers I work with also do science rap. Uh, but it was, uh, I, I mean, it was a novel variant, let's say. But the rap, you know, the, the hip-hop community, in my experience, is more interested in the skill set and less interested in the message. They celebrate the message, but they can tell that I'm a dedicated rap artist who has really taken the time to learn to perform and freestyle. And that's the level that I connected with them on, and they like the fact that I'm doing something innovative. So I've had I've had a great response, and I represent lots of rappers now as their agent as well. So rap is about the message. So we're going to take a, a break, Baba Baba Brinkman, and uh, when we come back, we'll see some more of your videos, and we'll learn more about your intersection of science and religion. Then we're going to ask you a little bit about your religious background as well. We'll be right back with more of the science rapper, Baba Brinkman. Hi, I'm Ron Reagan, an unabashed atheist. When I first recorded that commercial back in 2014, being openly atheist in America was still fairly uncommon. 
Today, the fastest growing religious group in the country is the non-religious, especially among the young. That progress is heartening, but the religious pushback is fierce and the forces of Christian nationalism are well organized. Our progress won't continue unless we work together so that reason and our secular constitution will prevail. That's why I'm asking you to join the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest and most effective association of atheists and agnostics working to keep state and church separate, just like our founders intended. Please join the Freedom From Religion Foundation today. Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist, not afraid of burning in hell. Welcome back to Free Thought Matters. We're continuing our conversation with the science rapper, Baba Brinkman. And besides science, Baba, you also have a rap guide to religion. You have a, a tune, it's an audio tune called Religion Evolves. What do you conclude about religion? Well, the idea that I explore in the record is can religion be explained naturalistically through evolutionary processes? And there's a few hypotheses about how it can, and there's a whole evolutionary religious studies discipline. So it could be a virus of the mind that doesn't help people, it just spreads uh, yeah. infectiously. Uh, or it could be a device that promulgates some adaptive benefit like community solidarity against adversity or like uh, moral behavior that's induced by the feeling of being watched by a supernatural agent, and supernatural agents are present more often, hypothetically, than people watching people to make sure they behave well. Or maybe it just promotes uh, reproductive fecundity, and the be fruitful and multiply message of many religions is the main reason it spreads, but that's still a Darwinian rationale. So that's what I'm looking at in the record is, how can we explain religion without having to use religion as a causal explanation? And what yeah. is your religious background? I was raised in a kind of spiritual New Age household. So my parents did meditation at ashrams and were sympathetic to Taoism and Sufism and Buddhism. And I am also sympathetic to some of the mindfulness techniques of those traditions, but I became a... Uh, philosophical naturalist, let's say, which means I don't put any stock in the supernatural as an explanatory uh, device for any phenomenon. Wow. Well, it seems like we could be friends then, doesn't it? <laughs> That's it. That, you know, technically, that makes me an atheist. But, uh, you know, there's more things you disbelieve in than just gods when you're a phys philosophical naturalist as well. <laughs> I remember during the pandemic, we had you on Ask an Atheist uh, a few years ago. Uh, you produced a tune encouraging people to stay home. Let's look at just a little bit of that. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for I know that coronavirus is not evil. It's a mindless biological agent, a tangle of RNA in a lipid sheet that evolved to replicate itself inside of cells. Just as we evolved an immune system to repel it, this I know because of science. Folks in my section like asking questions, taking measurements, testing hypotheses about how policy interventions limit the spread of infection. Natural selection, only game in town. You can find it any place a replicator is found. I'm DNA based and staycation bound now because there's a new replicator in town taking the crown rna based with the lipid shell soap can rip it apart so give it hell but just in case update your living well shelter in place regardless if you're ill stay home reduce transmission so, so stay home i bet you saved some lives with that video <laughs> I, I sure hope so. That was, I started writing that song about a month into the lockdowns and wow. uh, you know not everybody was playing by the rules at that time and there was uh, you know pretty I mean I remember in New York with the freezer trucks outside the hospitals you know transporting people to the morgues because the death rates were so high and uh, yeah I'm, I'm glad that things have uh, chilled out since then and we can all go out and mix again. Uh, I actually had COVID myself about two and a half weeks ago and you know, had a mild case, I'm fully vaccinated and was back in the mix two weeks later. And it's, uh, you know, it's nice. We've domesticated the virus to a large degree. <laughs> you did pretty well to wait until just now to get it. That was my second time, actually. Oh. But uh, 
you know, this is the this is uh, I think the new normal is yeah. it, you'll catch it eventually. You'll get your uh, immunizations, and you definitely got to be careful around people that are have comorbidities. But uh, you know, I'm I'm really <laughs> imagine if the world had stayed like it was when we spoke last time. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, it would have not not really been tenable. The, yeah. the whole economics and the personal tra tragedies of it all and everything. So yeah, I'm happy happy we're coming out of it. Thanks be to science. Yeah, we didn't Thanks. fight this Thanks. battle. We didn't fight the battle with thoughts and prayers, did we? We, we did it with our brains. Oh, A sorry. historical triumph of science. I agree. So, can you tell us about your company, Event Wrap, that produces wrap-up summaries? Absolutely. Yeah. So, I have this odd little niche where I do topical, specific rap songs. And over the years, I've met other artists that either do that or really want to get into it. We do custom rap content. Sometimes we write it on site to summarize the event and reference the people that are there and what's happening. And sometimes we'll create custom videos. Actually, uh, that I'm Human video filmed at the Naledi Caves was a custom rap commission that the University of California, San Diego uh, hired us to make to to communicate human evolutionary uh, research. So, you know, this is the idea behind the agency is there's a lot of topics out there and there's a lot of talented rappers that would love to put them into songs. And we need to find the clients and sponsors uh, who will put up the production budget to make those rap videos happen, whether it's about science or religion or anything else. It's kind of like the Renaissance patronage model of rap. If you want to get a Sistine Chapel painted, you're going to need to find a Medici sponsor, mm -hmm. uh, and that's what my agency does. Well, let's look at one of the examples of one of your other... Do you know who this is? Nathan Dufour, Na Nathanology, one of the uh, very talented rappers I met here in New York, who I'm proud to represent now with the agency. And he was commissioned to make this as a uh, historical survey of free speech controversies, and it was the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, which has recently rebranded, but it's fire.org that commissioned us to make this one. Well, let's look at it. Here is the history of free speech. So-called free speech and the thought of the West has been traced to Greece. The Athenian policy of speech equality for all and the polity, they called it democracy. So speak as you want to speak, but not if you're not a he. And not if you're Socrates speaking on an orthodox topic. We've all agreed to make you drink hemlock. Stop the philosophy. Ah, gee, and in ancient Rome, too, there was liberty of speech, but it was freedom for a few. And it was even more true in the age of the Caesars. Depending on who you were, the Caesar could seize your words. Yes, sir, I guess this is justice. And then there was Jesus in the age of Augustus. He died for his truth, but he vibed with his group. And they made it go viral, the idea grew. They tried for a few centuries to suppress the little movement until soon with the rest of the West, they said the word is flesh. As history attests, sometimes the oppressor may become the oppressed and vice versa. Mm. So free speech waned. It took a back seat in a European brain. But behind the refrain, all there is to see is the gospel. So don't hear or say heresy. Shh. But in the ancient Islamic state, free speech thronged to the opposite caliphate. Rwandi al-Razi and Avicenna could calibrate classical thought with the Quran and contemplate. And that was all great, but that Shangri-La of free thought got stopped by the Sharia law. Because it's all a seesaw, all in a Allah, and in between no free speech law, free of law. Uh. And so it went in the West, and yet free speech didn't rest in the breast. And in the 15th century it did spread, when Gutenberg hit with the print and press. Luke penned his words upon a church in Wittenberg and ripped a schism in the church and then within the Christian world a revolution then emerged with the question getting heard as to which of several versions of religion one should serve. Word? Reformation? Sure ain't vacation. Share if you dare your preferred salvation. And if it should disturb either church or the state, it still wasn't rare to get burned at the state. For Giordano Bruno, it sure was brutal. Literally burned for serving his truth. And though Galileo lied and lived, he hid a truth. Sure the earth's static, then he added, yet it moved. From the mid-16th to the mid-17th, many more more Europeans would die for their beliefs, and while some died for science, other Europeans silenced the speech of other peoples through conquest and violence. Meanwhile, on another continent, the colonists were confident their conscience said free speech for all. By all they meant Caucasian men. But the concept spread. Elite de Gouge fled the cause of the enslaved and for feminism too in the French Revolution, till she who had reached far ahead of her time lost her head for free speech. Wow, that's really creative. That it goes on and on and on, doesn't it? That's just a, a part of it. Uh, the free speech history of free ridiculously speech. Ridiculously ambitious. It's the entire world history of significant events in free speech in about a seven-minute-long rap video, and I was so proud when I when he uh, handed it in. So we're going to ask you to do an improvised uh, rap for us today at the end of the show. But just quickly before you do, what does your T-shirt say? I love. 
I love Lucy, the Australopithecine. Oh, Lucy uh, from teaches Ethiopia. teaches us about our ancestry. Huh. Yeah, and Donald Johansson, of course, uh, was a member of our, of our group, and he spoke at one of our conferences. He's the guy who discovered Lucy, that skeleton. So uh, can you do something like you do for these events that you put on where you sort of summarize what just happened? Sure, absolutely. And, uh, and just to make sure that people know that it's improvised, maybe you can suggest uh, some phrases that I put in it, uh, and I'll riff on them. How about freedom from religion? Uh, well, free will, of course. Uh, but uh, one more. You, you have the freedom to do this in about fifty or sixty seconds. So. <laughs> okay, I'll do my best. Here we go. Madison, was, Madison, Wisconsin. <laughs> all right. Yo, check it out. I'm freestyle rocking. I'm going from New York all the way to Madison, Wisconsin. This is how I freestyle. These my free stees. Gotta give a shout out to that Wisconsin cheese. Do it with ease. Yes, indeed. Rhymes I be kicking. Often on the topic of freedom from religion. I'm saying that is necessary for free thought. Plus I rip hip hop from the rap to the beatbox down to the break dancing and plus the graffiti. Freedom from religion is free thought. That's easy. You can do that. You can do that. Get that skill that mental idea you have the free will i mean the ability i'm talking to all of you free will it's provisional it's not molecules it's social but you could hear it in my dope flow you could just now go and get that idea in your brain yes and try to spit it back in the form of rap yes indeed these the rappers i gotta give a shout out to free thought matters this is the way that i do it from annie laurie to dan and it stomps this here is the hip-hop the rhyme renaissance <laughs> a free thought. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you could go on for five more minutes. That was amazing. <laughs> Incredible. Thank you. That's, yeah. you know, rap, rap is a very versatile art form, and I want to spread it into as many corners of the world intellectually and socially as I can. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm all about. Well, thank you for doing that, and thank you for joining us today, Baba Brinkman. My pleasure. Thank you. And thank you for watching Free Thought Matters. Because Free Thought Matters. I'm Steve Pinker. In my book, Enlightenment Now, I show that the world has become a better place as reason has been overcoming superstition and tribalism. But the values of the Enlightenment are under attack. That's why I'm a proud member of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest association of free thinkers working to keep state and church separate. Please join me in supporting the Freedom From Religion Foundation to ensure that our government is driven not by religion, but by reason.